Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on AWS Compute Optimizer. What is AWS Compute Optimizer? This particular service makes recommendations to reduce costs of your workloads hosted in AWS, considering your utilization data. So this is the simplest definition that you can give anyone regarding this particular service. If someone asks you what is AWS Compute Optimizer, this is the easiest and the simplest definition that you can give that person. Now this particular service basically helps you to optimize three types of resources, right? First is EC2 instances, Second is EBS volumes, and third is Lambda functions. So you can use AWS Compute Optimizer to make recommendations that provide optimal configuration for these three types of resources. How does it do that? This particular service analyzes the configuration and resource utilization of your workloads using several characteristics such as CPU utilization, storage utilization, or any daily utilization patterns that you may have. So you can see that it collects all this information and using all this information, it provides a recommendation to you that, hey, this is how you can optimize this particular workload right, going further ahead and basically reduce cost and improve performance. But how does that do that behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, it uses machine learning. So imagine that AWS Compute Optimizer is collecting all this data using machine learning on top of it. And by doing that, it develops the various recommendations as to how to optimize these resources these three types of resources. The default AWS Compute Optimizer option analyzes CloudWatch metrics data for the last 14 days. This is a default option. But let's say if you wanted a little more detailed option, especially when it comes to EC2s and auto-scaling groups, right? in that case, you will have to go for a paid feature and that speed feature is called has enhanced infrastructure matrix mode. Okay, so basically if you go for EIM, as I call it, or enhanced infrastructure matrix mode, if you enable this, this is the paid feature, then once it is activated, it will provide recommendations by utilizing data that is captured on monthly and quarterly basis. So the key difference between the default mode and the enhanced infrastructure matrix mode is the fact that in the paid, this is a paid feature, right? So the paid feature, it analyzes the last three months of CloudWatch history data compared to the default mode, which is only 14 days. So you can say this is one sixth data and this is data for the last three months. So if you want a little more robust, uh, let's say recommendation, right then en enabling the enhanced infrastructure matrix uh, feature would be very very helpful this particular diagram basically tells us how to work with this service and how to get started so if you want to get started you can simply opt in in your individual account right and say that yes i want to opt in for aws compute optimizer once you opt in and the service is activated, it will basically analyze all of your utilization data and provide recommendations to improve cost and performance. To do that, as we saw earlier as well, it uses resource configuration, utilization data, and then provides recommendations. And of course, behind the scenes, it uses CloudWatch metrics data. Any recommendations that this particular service provides, it can be exported to S3. It 
can also be integrated with AWS Cost Explorer and AWS Systems Manager. And once you have the recommendations, it is totally up to you if you would like to reconfigure uh, your resources, basically again, to reduce cost and improve performance. So his job is to provide recommendations. It's up to you whether you consider the recommendation or you don't consider the recommendation. Benefits. I think benefits are pretty obvious, right? It's very easy to set up. You just need to opt in. It has a lower cost and we will look at pricing in a little bit. And at the end of the day, you have optimized compute resources. And the use case is essentially a compute optimization with recommendations, right? So anytime you feel that, hey, I need to reduce my bill, is there any way to optimize this thing further? Which is typically a question that a lot of AWS administrators, chief architects, or even the CIOs, CTOs, they keep on asking like, how can I lower my bill? Is there any way to optimize this thing further? That's where you can leverage this particular service. In fact, it is quite possible that in your, in your company's uh, cloud environment, right, or your client's cloud environment, this particular service might actually already be on. So if you've ever been told that, hey, you know, we recommend that you use this particular configuration, you know, you downsize or you upscale depending upon your CPU utilization or your storage utilization or just in general your utilization data, it is quite possible that that recommendation came from AWS Compute Optimizer. Now let us look at pricing. So I have this link open right here. So with the default version, you typically don't pay anything, but you only pay for the resources, you know, that you want to optimize, which you will anyways pay like your EC2 instances, or your EBS volumes or your Lambda functions, and of course your CloudWatch monitoring fees. But remember the default option only takes or considers the utilization data and the CloudWatch matrix for your last 14 days. If you want to go for the paid feature, which is the enhanced infrastructure matrix mode, right? if you want to go for and you want to activate this particular paid feature, then the cost per resource per hour is this. I'm highlighting on, on the screen, right? So zero point, you can see like triple zero three three six zero two one five. And I really don't know why this kind of an odd number, but this is what they came up with. Anyways, the good part about probably coming up with this number is that if you turn on the paid feature, then you would only pay 25 cents per resource per month, considering that the resource is running for the full month, which has 31 days in it. So that's probably one of the reasons and the only reason that I felt that they came up with this kind of an odd number so that the overall cost comes to 25 cents per resource. So this is the pricing table right here, right? So for enhanced infrastructure matrix for EC2, this is the number that we just saw on the top. And these are some pricing examples. So let's look at a couple of examples. So here you have five EC2 instances, right? That ran for an entire month of July. So one month has 744 hours. So you have five resources. Each resource is running for the entire month, right? One month has 744 hours. At those are the number of billable hours. This is the hourly charge that we saw on the top. So phi into 744 into the hourly charge, it would basically come to $1.25. In fact, this calculation should be pretty straightforward. Why? We saw over here right on the top, right? That per resource, it is 25 cents if the resource is running for the whole month. So you have five EC2 instances, right? So you are paying a quarter per resource. So for five EC2 instances, you would pay how much? $1.25. And that's exactly where this thing lands. Let's say if you had an auto scaling group, right? And uh, initially it was fixed size for four, but then you added a couple of other instances and it grew to five, right? 
So in that case, they are assuming that three resources ran for 31 days, that's for the whole month, and two resources ran for half a month, that is 372 hours. These are the billable hours, by the way. So remember three resources, one resource is 25 cents for the whole month. So three resources will be 75 cents, right? And two resources ran for half a month. That is equivalent to one resource running for one full month. So hence, for two resources, half a month, you will end up paying 25 cents. So for all of these five resources in total, you will end up paying a total of a dollar, which is, I guess, peanuts, especially if this service is going to help you optimize, reduce cost, improve performance, and at the end of the day, help you to solve, uh, basically save, let's say, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So paying a, a simple fee like this should be pretty straightforward. And if you just want to start, I would recommend start with like the default version for 14 days. See, you might basically get, you know, a lot of help with just just the default feature itself. And if you have certain auto scaling groups or is a significant number of EC2s running, you can probably definitely go for enhanced infrastructure matrix option as well. So I hope that this particular tutorial was helpful. Do explore this service, right? In order to appreciate what this service does, you need to basically you know, see this service working in a live environment, like an environment that has, let's say, a significant number of EC2 instances or EBS volumes or even Lambda functions. So let's say your, it could be your dev environment, right? It could be your production environment, but you probably don't have access to it. But it could definitely be your dev environment wherein, you know, you have multiple EC2 VMs probably running. And you can certainly try out this feature over there. In fact, as I said earlier, this may already be on in your current environment. But it is difficult to kind of, uh, you know, showcase the power of this particular service uh, at home. In, you know, like I'm probably using my personal account right now, right? Or if you are at home on your laptop or something like that using your personal account, you will not be able to appreciate this, the power of the service over there because you don't have that many number of workloads running, right? Especially workloads running for the whole month. It requires that kind of a data, at least for 14 days at a minimum. So see if you can, you know, see this service in action at either your company's, uh, you know, cloud environment or your client's cloud environment, or typical AWS administrator or someone or, or the AWS architect might use this service, especially the infrastructure architect might use this service to optimize resources further, right? So this is it from me today, guys. I hope this particular video was helpful to you. Do post your comments, especially if you have worked with this service then do let me know how was your experience. I would really like to learn from your experience and know how you were benefited and did you really like the recommendations that were made by AWS Compute Optimizer. So I will end today and see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.